better is coming. Come on, grab your Bibles, grab your Bibles. He come out show Toyomosa. You thought you were gonna die, Hikobo Shanda. But God says life. Heshina Mamabosaya is in my presence, hey Kochanda. And you shall live to declare the works of the Lord. Oh Yamama Shetia Naroso. He come Shanda. This is your better season. He come Shanda. Some of y'all thought that Bishop was. Second Timothy, the fourth chapter. He shamasu. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. Whew. Neither has it entered into the heart of me. The thing that God has already prepared for you, He shot out my soul. He already worked it out. He's already put movement to it. He He just needs somebody to declare it to manifest. He Second Timothy, the fourth chapter. Beginning at the first verse. <laughs> the spirit of god has already ministered to us even just the last few minutes he kashanda mausoye but he wants to get us ready for our better Beginning at the first verse, Second Timothy, the fourth chapter. And it reads, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heat to themselves teachers having itchy ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things. Endure afflictions, do the work of the evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered, 
and the time of my departure is at hand I have fought a good fight I have finished my course I have kept the faith henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness which the Lord the righteous judge shall give me at that day and this is the best part to me and not to me only hallelujah hallelujah but because you decided to get up and come out during this harvest festival this celebration of growth expansion and release god says but unto all of them also that have love of his appearing hallelujah as you take your seats just whisper to your neighbor go big or go home hallelujah you may take your seats God says go big or go home my God as the Lord begins to to deal with me and to walk me through scripture he always seems to take me back to basics to make sure that I have a full spectrum, a full understanding, a full glance of what he is trying to accomplish through his word. So the first question that I asked him, I said, who? What was the audience here? And in this second chapter or the second book of Timothy, this second letter from the apostle Paul to a young man by the name of Timothy. We come to understand that Timothy, his name, his name means honoring God or precious to God. Before he was even converted, before he even understood who he was, before he even stepped and tapped into destiny and purpose, God already had deemed him precious in his sight. He was the son of a Greek father. He was the son of a Jewish mother. He had a mixed racial background, but he identified himself as a follower of Christ. He kept it simple, but his upbringing, his background made him valuable in the kingdom because he had both the Jewish and Greco Roman culture background understanding and could minister to that group of people he was known amongst the people he was known amongst the leaders as a man of great faith he was faithful and he was recognized for his faith some would have even called him a man of genuine faith which means that he was a man that was introduced and built in faith since his infancy he had a mother a praying mother he had a, a grandmother a praying grandmother that taught him something extra special it taught him scripture and taught him to to, to to bask in the word of god to understand this thing we call faith understand this god that we serve and he comes to this point in his life where he's able to hear and then respond to the ministry of Paul. The story goes on to tell us that he later joins forces with Paul and begins to travel with him. He also then elevates to a place where Paul entrusted him to go out and back to the churches that he had already established to be a representative of him and the ministry of Christ. And finally, he then becomes a pastor. He's trained. He's taught. He's empowered. He's tested. And then he's entrusted over the church of Ephesus. We have these two books. We have these two letters from Paul to a man named Timothy. And he again is a young man. If you do the research, you would find that Timothy was late teens, early 20s. He was a young man. All right. You look at me and you think that I'm a baby in amongst this host of uh, of 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 Bible champions. Yeah. Timothy, too. He was a young man, but becomes a pastor. 
And as I started to think about Timothy and as I started to think about this truth, I had to reflect back on the fact that there was a time. There was a time in the church when kids, the children were drugged to church. They didn't have a choice. We made sure that they were here. But now we can't get the children out to church. But not just the children, we don't even see their parents in church. When kids knew the Bible, they could recite all of the books of the Bible. They were learning at least one memory verse a week. But now, when you just ask them about three, John 3, 16, you get a deer in headlights. Confused. There was a time when kids were hiding in the back of the church and we've seen it playing on their phones. Writing notes, somebody says. Instead of wanting to sing, wanting to read the scripture in church, wanting to pray, wanting to get on the drums and play and participate. But now we are completely disconnected from the worship experience but a young man becomes a pastor there was a time when kids hungered for the baptism and the holy ghost because they understood that salvation and righteousness would be their reward but now because they see no manifestation of salvation power they've got nothing to hunger after there was a time but paul understood he understood that we, we as a body of believers, we as parents and guardians, we as, as, as people that are maturing in our relationship with Christ, we have a responsibility to prepare the children to be ready when Christ moves on their heart. We have a responsibility to prepare them to recognize the pull on their spirit. We have a, a, a responsibility to mentor them and teach them the word of God. That's our who. Yeah. Well, what? What was the message that Paul was trying to give us? What was the message that he was sending to Timothy? Simple one word, pursue. He was telling us to pursue. Timothy was given instruction and advice for leading the church. Timothy was encouraged not to be minimized by his age. First Timothy 4 and 12, it says, let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believer in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Some of you might recognize that, that because that's the, the scripture that we have grounded G412 youth ministry on. 1 Timothy 4, 12. And Timothy was encouraged not to neglect the gift that was in him, but to be devoted to the scriptures, to be devoted to exhortation and to be, to be devoted to teaching. Because Paul understood again that we have a responsibility to follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness we have a responsibility to fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life but how do we do this how do we find ourselves successful with this gift with this ministry that god has placed in us he gives us simple thought have a good diet and have good company Timothy was instructed to change his diet because he wanted Paul wanted Timothy to understand that regardless of what was going on in his body, we serve a miracle working God that can heal us beyond our understanding. But we also serve a God that gives us natural ability and resources to also walk in healing. And if we put the right things inside of us, we can expect the right things out of us. Not just naturally, but also spiritually. That's why Timothy tells us, or that's why Paul tells Timothy, who is telling us, 
to or, or to watch for false teachers to continue in the things that you have known and that have been proven to you why does he do this because paul understands this very simple fact that we have a responsibility you and me and this body of Christ to stand firm in truth and not sway with opposition or popularity we have a responsibility to teach right from wrong and to distinguish truth from error we have the responsibility to study and show thyself approved unto God rightly defining the word of truth we have a responsibility to shun profane and vain babbling for they will increase unto more ungodliness here we go again there was a time when the church was passionate about the things of God where pastor Paulette didn't have to stand up every single Wednesday and beg people to come to center to soul winners sessions and classes when we didn't have to stand and, and get people to sign up to go out in the streets to beg people to come and help make bags. They were passionate about the things of God. When the church held fast to the faith, this was what allowed us to, or led us to the establishment of all of the churches that we read about in the scriptures. This is what led us to the Azusa Street Revival in Los Angeles, California. That was the beginning of the, the modern Pentecostal movement. This was a thing that motivated and caused the immersion of iconic black heroes like Harriet Tubman, believing that she knew that there was something better for her. Fred Frederick Douglass, Booker T. Washington, some might recall Martha Luther King. Even though he's not of our faith, there was something driving Malcolm X, Jesse Jackson, and the like. They were people that were driven by a belief, by a faith, something inside them they had passion about it and they went after it and today God is calling us back he's calling us back to connect to holiness he's calling us back to being set apart he's calling us back to being consistent he's calling us back to being thirsty for righteousness and he's calling us back to earnestly pursue spiritual gifts not just for your own name's sake but for the advancement of the kingdom of God if we advance the kingdom of God this will lead to the infiltration of world systems if we advance the kingdom of God this will lead to the rescue of our schools from church separation if we advance the kingdom of God, this will lead to the return of prayer and destruction of gun violence on our campuses worldwide. If we advance the kingdom of God, this will lead to the rebirth of biblical principles governing political policy and lead to the rest restoration of world, the world economy. God is calling us back to advancing his kingdom and it brings us back to the scripture that we're in today second timothy the fourth chapter and paul tells us i charge thee therefore before god and the lord jesus christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom the work of ministry the work that is called on each and every one of us to participate in it's not something indifferent, but it's something that's necessary. It's necessary for you and it's necessary to see change in the world in which we live. The work of ministry is our ability to give back to God who created us and who blesses us on a daily basis. Ministry or not, accepting or denying, being dead or being alive. All of us, every single one of us under the sound of my voice must make an account for what you have been entrusted to do. What your hands have been entrusted to do, what has been entrusted in your mouth to say, to preach the word of God, to teach the word of God and to believe that word with great conviction. And Paul goes on to say, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort 
with all long suffering and doctrine. And he tells us this because he wants us to have boldness and understanding that we have the authority to acknowledge sin that is around us. That's first sin that is in your life and sin that is in the lives of those around you. What is the point of being a light in the world if you're never going to turn your light on and light up people's dark places? God has called you to be that which acknowledges what is not like him. He has called us to share with all that there is a need to repent, believe, and to live holy. Whether we want to or whether we don't. Whether they will listen or whether they won't. Whether it's convenient for us or whether it's not. Whether it will benefit us or whether it will cost us. This is the charge that we have. Ministry was never intended to be anything other than a calling. It was never intended to be a profession. It's a calling. It's not a college of titles. It's not pointless entourages and people gathering around us. It's not reserved seats. It's not a license to say and do whatever it is that we want to do. That's not what God intended for it to be. But ministry is us being bringing light to darkness. Ministry is compelling wrongdoers to repentance but with patience ministry is motivational that's why we that's why we see the prophetic being released that's why we see the gift of serving the gift of teaching the gift of exhortation the gift of giving leading and mercy gifts ministry is accrediting it is meant to be that which offers through the word of wisdom the revealed practical truth that we need to succeed the revealed word of knowledge, which is the revealed doctrinal truth, biblical, sound truth, by exercising through faith, through healing, through miracles, the discernment of spirits, by proclaiming truth through diverse tongues and the interpretation of tongues. God has a purpose and a reason for everything that he's released into this sanctuary. The ministry that testifies of Christ that is the call for the apostle one who is sent the evangelist one who convinces the pastor one who leads the teacher one who empowers ministry is is is, is being us 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 being steadfast firm unwavering ministry is being unmovable planted and grounded ministry is abounding hallelujah so that we can start begetting more sheep somebody shout hallelujah so paul tells us to hold fast hold fast to the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and in love hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering be strong and be of good courage be not afraid neither be thou dismayed the lord thy god he is with you so you don't have to be fearful for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine when they will will will, will rest back on what is pleasing what's simple what's easy what this flesh desires but this is the season of harvest and if this is the season of harvest what we have to first do is go through the season of seed time We've got to start planting seeds. But this is why Paul is urging us. Because the, the, the present opportunity that we have will soon pass away. He's telling us to be ready. Because there's a time when they won't even try to listen. There is soon a time, hallelujah, when people will heap to false teaching. Because they're looking to just satisfy their inner man. There's a time when people will turn their ears away just to peaceful banter. Where they don't want to hear about the wrong in their life. There's a time, hallelujah, when we will take pleasure in fables and, de and, and delusions. Where we will grow weary in the plain old gospel. But I just get excited when I think about the old church. When I think about the old way we used to do things. When the band used to just 
crack up with the drum used to get going and the saints used to get together and just clap their hands somebody would put a tambourine up in the air we had sister Annette that would pull out her maracas we had Deacon Ben that would pull out the tambourine we had people that got connected together to evoke the presence of God why because when we begin to evoke the presence of God every single thing that we stand in need of there is an ability to have it met there's purpose in the old way now I won't knock it all I understand that the online church there's a benefit it's mobile it blesses you all week long but that should not be the thing that hinders you to gather yourself together because there's something that happens when the saints get together hallelujah I understand that there's a convenience, but the presence of God is not intended to be convenient. Rather, it is intended to shake us up, to convict our souls, to ignite our spirits, to expose our gifts, and to charge us for service. But Paul says, but watch thou in all things. Be careful for nothing. But in everything in prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall guide, shall keep your heart and your mind through Jesus Christ. For I am now ready to be offered. Paul says, my time is coming close. I feel a shift in my spirit. And I don't want to go to my grave holding on to what God has given me. But I know that it needs to be released in its appropriate place. And Paul is telling us to take up the mantle and do what you have been taught. Why is that? Because mom and dad won't always be there. Our praying grandmothers and grandpas will eventually be called to their own rest and our pastor unfortunately he can't pick up his phone every time you call but God says you've got to know me for yourself you've got to build a relationship for yourself you've got to make ready yourself you've got to answer for yourself you've got to be ready to say yes I've turned away from my old way yes I went down in Jesus name and cleaned up my house and prepared it for the gifts of the spirit yes I have kept your commandments and yes I have walked in your statutes and because I've done this henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness hallelujah for our light affliction which is but for a moment hallelujah worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory but lay up yourselves treasure in heaven whether or or whether neither uh moth nor wrath doth cor corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal and he that reapeth receiveth wages this is the benefit that you have gathereth fruit unto life eternal that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together he's calling us together look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought but that we receive a full reward somebody say full reward for thanks be unto God which giveth us the victory and causes us to triumph who have done great things and bless us with all spiritual blessings somebody say I'm blessed who have dealt wondrously with us who hath created us for good works who is love and commendeth his love toward us who is faithful who will not suffer us to be tempted above that which we are able hallelujah and who hath in, in enabled us putting us in his ministry with unspeakable gifts 
There is unspeakable opportunities and abilities right here in this room. Well, you might ask me, what am I saying all of that for? God is calling us. We started by saying that better is coming. A better day is coming, not just for you to walk in another level of peace, another level of comfort, but better is coming for the kingdom of heaven. We're living this life for a very small season. But eternity has to be something greater for us to look forward to. He's calling for all of us to take up arms and to fight. To go and to preach the good news to the lost. To be strong and to be courageous. To stand firm on the word of God. To be like Samson. To get our flesh awake hallelujah and to 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 open up ourselves to the gifts of god to be like daniel to sleep comfortably even in the midst of hungry lions to be like esther to seize the moment to seize the moment by ruling over fear and calling a fast when it's necessary to hear the voice of god to give yourself up to the will of god so that you too can say if i perish let me perish but let your will be done god i need you to get the glory out of my life to be like david and to stay in the hole when the philistines signs heard that David was anointed the Bible says that David went in the hole what does that mean David went into a secure place he went into a place that he can find comfort and shelter somebody called him a strong tower in which he can run and find safety he went into the hole to find safety and he did not move until he heard a word from the Lord he did not move until God moved first We've got to be ready to stay in the hole. But some of us have been in the hole longer than our time has required. Some of us have gotten comfortable in the hole. Some of us have gotten comfortable not doing and sitting back and waiting. But God is saying it's the time and the season for you to come out of your place of hiding. Today is the season for you to begin to walk in your purpose. Today is the season for you to start to walk in power. Not just to observe power but to be power why because you need the same power that manifests through ministry that you see God wants you to be that power in everything that you see in everything that you touch we can't stay in the hole but there's a time to get in the hole and then there's a time just like Jonah where we gotta wake ourselves up we've been running long enough and we find ourselves in the belly of a great fish. But God's got to shake us. He's got to get our mind right. He's got to remind us of what he's called us to do. And remind us that he's empowered us to do it. So that we can get back in place. That we can stand strong in the ministry that he's called us to do. God has anointed each and every one of us. And he's anointed us to be servants of his. God says, hallelujah, he's anointed us. And that anointing, it gives us access to God's parental love. That anointing gives us access to divine knowledge. That anointing gives us access to the promises and the benefits of God. That anointing, it's a kingly power that allows us to battle against temptation, sin, and evil. It's an, a priestly power to pray and to worship God. It is an evangelical power that causes faith and fruitfulness to rise up in us. It is a prophetic power to speak change in every aspect of our life. And it is an anointed uh, representation of the heavenly father here as an earthly father. God is calling each and every one of us to stand up and to begin to walk in the ministry in which he's called us to stop playing, to stop playing with the things of God, but either to go big or to go home. It's time out to keep talking about what is God calling me to do 
It's time out to keep talking about why do I keep getting passed up? It's time out for why won't they make room for me? But God says, if you're going to do it, go big with it or take it back to the house. God is calling each and every one of us to stand in his power. Not in man's power and man's opportunity, but he wants you to stand strong in him. Some of you don't have a ministry for these four walls. Some of you have been called out into the street. Some of you have a testimony that won't benefit anybody in here, but you have a testimony that will go into the sick room. You have a testimony that will go into the drug house. You have a testimony that will pull out the prostitute. You have a testimony that will pull out the drug user, but you want to fit into comfort and fit into glamour but that's not where God is calling all of us and you've got to know where God is calling you to what were you called to do everyone has some sort of innate gift everyone and all of our gifts are different they manifest in different ways the Bible talks about uh, about there being a body with different parts and all of those parts come together to work in harmony not to compete but to work in unity we all have a gift and regardless of what your individual gift is God has called all of these gifts to come together because re regardless of whether or not you were called to minister through through the prophetic, if you were called to lay hands on the sick and see them recover, if you are called to be a giver and walk in the gift of giving and the gift of service, you still need all of the other gifts. Hallelujah. So that you can walk in the balance of God, the fullness of God. Hallelujah. Stand all over the house today. We all have an assigned season, an assigned place, an assigned function. And no, regardless of where you are in your life's journey, God has placed something special and supernatural in you. It is a gift. And the moment that each and every one of us say yes to his will release ourselves and make our homes ready receive his spirit inside of us with that spirit he gives each and every one of us a gift and it is our responsibility as paul instructs to earnestly pursue the knowledge of that gift some of you are still today in your late 40s in your late 50s in your late 60s having the same conversation waiting to understand what God called me to do some of us are having that same conversation but God says if you earnestly pursue me I will not only open your eyes, hallelujah, but I will give you success. What does success look like? Bishop asked us to invite people to come this month. And he's looking to see a fruit from our labor. Likewise.